Hello and welcome to my channel. So the day that I'm filming this is June 25th, which is, you know, the sixth month of the year. So I thought it would be fun to do a mid-year book freak out tag. I haven't been on booktube for very long and I haven't done a, a tag video ever. I have a couple ideas of ones that I want to do, but I thought that this one would be a good way to ease into everything. Um, so I don't remember exactly who it was that created the mid-year book freakout tag, but I will look it up whoever did it and I will tag them down below so that they get their credit. So before I get into any of the questions, I want to go over some of my stats. So I'm expected to finish 65 books by the end of June. I made two little bar charts to kind of go along with more of a book breakdown. I'm not going to go too much into it, but the bar graph on the left breaks down all the genres that I read. And then the graph on the right breaks down how many books I read in each month with the bar on the left being how many books I read for work and the bar on the right being how many books I read for fun. Um, this, I think it's important to differentiate because I read for work, I'm an audiobook proofreader, and so I wanna see how much books I'm actually reading on my own time. I don't really have too many more stats outside of that. I thought about counting up how many pages I read, but since I haven't finished all of the books in June yet, I didn't really want to count those yet just because it, something goes wrong and I didn't read them, I didn't want to include them. I've read about like 2,000 pages each month, so if we're gonna add that all up, it's between like 12 and 15,000 pages I've read so far this year. Like that's, that's a pretty good rough estimate. So let's get into the questions. Question number one is the best book you've read so far this year. This one was kind of hard to choose because I read a lot of pretty good books this year and I also didn't want to reuse the same books for every single category. The first book is Ascension by Sam Ferguson. I don't have this in physical copy, I read it for work. It is a book about dragons and it was absolutely amazing. Like I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's a trilogy, I'm not exactly sure, but I definitely plan on getting the physical copy and the other two books in the series and continue reading that. It was a long one, but it was really fun. Like, if you like dragons, I think you would like it. The second book I used for this question, I know it's the best book you've read so far, but I really couldn't just settle on one. So the next one that I chose is We Were Liars, just because I really, really, really enjoyed this. I actually made a whole separate vlog of reading this, reviewing it, I'll link down below. So this is a mystery thriller. I really, really enjoyed this. Five stars, would recommend. Question number two. The best sequel you've read so far this year. So this is kind of tough because I didn't really read any sequels this year. I kind of read either like standalones or read like the first book in a series. Like for work, I don't get to choose the books I read. They usually come out of order. So technically I read the sequel that I really enjoyed. It was called The Virgin Who Vindicated Lord Darlington by Anna Bradley. That is the second book in a series, I believe they're companion novels. I feel like that's kind of cheating though because I didn't read the first book, but it is the sequel. <laughs> so this book is a historical romance and it's kind of got like female detective and mystery vibes and ghosts and it's, it's honestly, it's just a good time. Like I really enjoyed reading this book. I would recommend it. I think it ended up giving it five stars. Oh, if you see me looking down, it's because I have my reading journal. <laughs> where I like wrote down all the questions and stuff. So, sorry, I don't have everything memorized. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Question number three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. This is also a difficult question. Qu okay, all these questions ended up being difficult for me. <laughs> Mostly because I don't stay very current with books that are current. <laughs> I don't know, I don't really like, I don't know what's coming out this year. I don't know what's coming out next year. I just, find a book that I enjoy reading and I read it. And that's kind of how I live my life. I don't know, like if I spent all of my time worrying about what book is gonna come out next month, then I'm ignoring all the books that's been written for the past like 200 years. And that's a lot of books. I've already had a couple existential crises that I will not be able to read all these books in my lifetime. I'm already there. So I haven't actually gotten any new releases this year. I mean, I did get one new release, but I'm currently reading it. So I, that doesn't fit the category. So I went with Fable by Adrienne Young. This book came out the end of 2020, I believe. I think it was like August, September. 
it doesn't say in the book but it it does say that it was released in 2020 so it's my new release like <laughs> it's one of the newer books on my shelf yeah this is a, a mermaid book i love mermaids and i love books so it's perfect question number four most anticipated release for the second half of the year we've hit the same wall <laughs> more books that are being released that i am not aware of i don't know what's coming out in the second half of the year i don't i'm not current with this type of stuff so i decided to alter this question to be a book that i'm most anticipating to read for the second half of the year so i decided re pretty recently that i wanted to read cassandra clare's shadow hunter series and i even i did all kinds of research so that i know which order to read the books in because there's like three different intertwining series and it's all over the four intertwining series i don't even know but it's kind of like all over the place so i did my own research and i took notes and color coded for which books to read in which order and which series and everything so i'm really looking forward to getting into those books for the second half of the year i'm actually going to the bookstore in a couple days a used bookstore and I'm gonna look for the first one um, City of Bones I think is the first one I will be doing some vlogs for that too because a lot of people already read these books and I want to share my opinions <laughs> as you know somebody reading it for the first time at 25 versus somebody reading it for the first time at 14 like I wish I read it at 14 I looked at it every time I went to the bookstore and I wanted to get it every single time I went to the bookstore but for one reason or another I just never got it Question number five, biggest disappointment, The Twin by Natasha Preston. This was my biggest disappointment. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know Natasha Preston books are very like guilty pleasures of mine. Like the writing style is not very good, but usually I love the story and I'm usually like, I'm in it for the story. This one wasn't good. I would have DNF'd this if it wasn't Natasha Preston, but I had to on principle. I just, I really, I didn't like it. The characters were so annoying. I wasn't rooting for anybody. The plot was very like, of course, of course that happened. Of course, like it's obvious, but the characters didn't see how obvious it was, which made me hate the characters even more. It was just, one star would not recommend. Also going into this book, I expected to give it a three stars because usually Natasha Preston books for me are three stars. And to even go into the book with low standards and still be disappointed, it's just like, it's an awful feeling. Like I already had low standards, <sighs> whatever. Question number six, biggest surprise. So this book I read for work um, so I don't have the physical copy of it. I would like to get the physical copy of it, maybe, I don't know, because I'm not sure if I would reread it. I did end up giving it five stars because I loved it. Uh, anyways, so the book is This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. So usually at work, I'm assigned a book and I don't get to choose, most of the time, I don't get to choose which book I'm reading. And so somebody's usually just like, here you go, read this book. After working at this place for two years, I'm at this place where I don't expect anything from these books. I'm just like, go into it completely blind. That way, if I'm hating the book, I'm not disappointed. Or if I really loved the book, it's it feels even greater. So I went into this with zero expectations. I didn't even know what it was about. And then I found out it was a sci-fi book and I was kind of like, I don't love sci-fi books. But it was also a YA and it was also LGBT and it was also like it had pirates and it was kind of like magical so I was like okay I'll give it a chance whatever like it, I was kind of overwhelmed with the number of things was in this book and then I loved it oh my god I loved it like the characters were so good they got me feeling like they got me actually caring about a robot it was just really good and yeah I was surprised Question number seven, favorite new author, debut or new to you? So this one is a new to me author. I've been reading a ton of new to me authors so far this year. My favorite one, Talia Hibbert. Talia Hibbert's writing style is so, so good. The book that I read from her was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. That was a five-star read. I love that book so, 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 so much. 
I've already talked about this in another vlog, so I don't want to get any more into it. I'll link that one too. But the book was so good. I really, really loved it. And I'm going to be looking into other Talia Hibbert books. Like, of course, I'm going to look into the Brown Sisters trilogy. I'm also going to be looking into other books she wrote. I don't actually know if she wrote other books outside of the Brown Sisters. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that. But I really, really like her work. Question number eight, new fictional crush. This one was kind of tough. I wasn't exactly sure who to pick, so I, I have two choices. I have Red from Get a Life, Chloe Brown. He's such a great character and I love tattoos. <laughs> the second one is Resand from Akatar. The part that he's in Akatar, he's kind of toxic, but that's what I like. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, like the way, okay. He does seem toxic for sure, but he also seems like a genuinely good guy. In the times when he's being toxic, it seems like he's doing it for a reason. Am I making excuses for him to be toxic so I don't seem like a horrible person having a fictional crush on a toxic person? Moving on. <laughs> Question nine, newest favorite character. So for this one, I picked Charlie from Heartstopper, volume one. Charlie is such a cute, genuine character. Like, I love him. I love him. There's nothing about Charlie I don't like. He's a favorite character. I feel like I'm picking two books for like every category, but I just can't make decisions. I just can't decide. Okay, so I also went with Lucian from My Guitar because do I even need to give a reason? Like, it's Lucian. I don't know what happens with him in the other books of the Akatar series, but the little bit that I saw of him in Akatar, I really enjoyed. He gives off like Fred and George Weasley vibes. If I don't, I don't know. Does anybody else get that? Question 10, book that made you cry. We were liars again. This is fitting in like the third category. This book made me cry. The ending was unexpected and it was heart wrenching. It was just good, like it made me cry. There was another book that made me cry too. Cause I feel like I'm cheating by picking um, We Were Liars again. Okay, so this book also made me cry. It's a uh, male male LGBT romance. It's called The Secrets in My Scowl by A.E. Via. This book was really, really good. It was more than just a romance. It was about friendship and betrayal and loss and grief. And it was just such a good story outside of the romance. Like these were just good, characters yeah actually yeah this this is going to be the one i'm going to use for this question is the secrets in my scalp i ended up giving this one five stars i really enjoyed reading it and i read it for work so that was that was great 11 what book made you happy heartstopper <laughs> five stars 10 out of 10 would recommend this is such a good book i'm so sad this is a library book and I'm also so sad that this book is so popular right now because it's like $20 for the first book on Amazon and I'm like, I'm not trying to spend $20 on a graphic novel, like no matter how much I like it. Fairy Loot is actually doing a special edition of it that I really want to get, but it comes into the same issue where it's $26 plus like $9 for shipping. So I love it, but I don't love it that much. 12. Most beautiful book you've bought this year or received. This is another one where I have two books. And they are Fable by Adrian Young and The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joanne He. Joan by Joan He. <laughs> I don't even have to say anything. They're beautiful. 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? So many. <laughs> so many. I have so many on my list. Ones that are kind of like a top priority that I don't already have in my July TBR because I've already kind of decided what's going to be in my july tbr that video is going to be coming out soon it's actually really fun i'm participating in a tarot card readathon that uh, a bunch of people are are hosting but that's not this video so i'm not going to get into it i need to read a court of mist and fury this is book two of Agatar. it's hefty i did kind of start reading it i'm having a little bit of a hard time getting into it but I'm also not putting 100% of my focus into it and it's not a top priority in June right now. So I gotta read this by the end of the year, I have to. I got this, well, this is the first arc I've ever gotten and I won this off of Goodreads. There was a Goodreads giveaway. It's being released in December and I wanna read this 
before it gets released. Otherwise, what's the point of having an arc, you know? Also, I really, really need to read Midnight Sun by the end of the year. I'm like the biggest, fakest Twilight fan that has ever existed because I loved the Twilight books. I read them in like eighth grade and I read the second book in like literally three days, which is pretty impressive for somebody who's 14. And I love them. And this book has been out for like a whole year yeah this book came out in 2020 and i'm still dragging my feet to read it i did start reading it you can see got like this far i'm also having a hard time getting into this one i don't know like edward is just so angsty and like i get that's the point of it and i hope it's kind of changes throughout the book i don't know i don't know i'm not loving it completely but i want to give it another try before the end of the year these three books are kind of top priorities outside of monthly TBRs. So that pretty much wraps up my mid-year book freakout tag. I really enjoyed doing this tag and I am definitely gonna do more tags in the future. But yeah, thank you to whoever it was that made this. Like it's such a good idea and it's such a good way to kind of reflect back on the books you've read and to kind of re-motivate yourself for the second half of the year. It's also interesting to see how far I've come making YouTube videos. Like my first YouTube video was released on February 1st and it didn't even have a voiceover like it was just me drawing in my bullet journal and now here i am showing my face talking and not stuttering every three seconds and like it's not a big accomplishment but i'm proud like i'm proud of myself and how far i've come i've gone from zero to 30 subscribers and i'm i'm proud i think this is video number 23 24 something that i've made in six months like Thank you to everybody who subscribes. Thank you to everybody who watches my videos, gives likes, just watches and en and enjoys my videos. Like, thank you so much to everybody. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.